Word up, peeps. Josh here, uh, another cruise ship related video. Uh, I just want to talk about basically what skills you need to be a cruise ship musician. Uh, first of all, don't suck, but that's uh, sort of a preliminary. So if you don't suck, um, <laughs> I'm just playing. Uh, basically, two things come to mind. I mean, this isn't an exhaustive list, but it's just two things that are very important for sure. Maybe there's other things, but we can only do so much in one YouTube video. First thing is music, be, ability to read music and sight read is huge. Like, even if your chops suck, if you can sight read really good, you might, you know, you can probably do a cruise ship gig. You just need to be able to read stuff down like a beast. Um, probably, especially if you play horns or something, because um, you have to double between like flute and clarinet and alto and tenor and uh, there's different transpositions and you have to play like lead lines and stuff, it's probably even harder than uh, rhythm section reading. But you just need to be able to read really well. As far as how to actually gauge your abilities, like to know if your reading is good enough to do cruise ship gigs, um, it's hard to say without you know working with someone personally, but um, one thing you can do if you know your reading's pretty good but you're not totally sure is just do an audition with a talent agency you know, just pick one and uh, just set up an audition and try it and see how you do. And, you know, they will they can give you feedback on how you did. And you don't necessarily have to work with the agency just because you did an audition. You haven't signed anything or made any agreements. Um, so that's one way you can gauge your skills. Again, uh, only if you think you're at least close. Um, if you're totally new to reading music, you're just definitely not going to be able to do a cruise ship gig. I can tell you right now. Um... But, you know, there is a range of ability but among the, the pool of cruise ship musicians. The first gig I did, there were a lot of people sort of just out of college, and it was a little bit more freshman-y, and this band is a lot more experienced. And, uh, you know, as a result, we do a lot less rehearsing, and everything's just kind of tight uh, automatically, which is really cool. I really uh, have enjoyed playing with this band. Um, anyway, so, uh, you need to be able to read like a beast. So just get it, your hands on as much music as you can and practice your sight reading. Um, if you're a bass player, you can check out my bass lesson videos and, uh, there's a lot of, a lot of those have free PDFs that come with them with sheet music that you can practice reading and that stuff mostly will be a lot more challenging rhythmically and technically than anything you'll need to read for a gig where mostly you're just going boom, 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 boom. You know what I'm talking about. Um, so anyway, you can check out my bass lesson videos if you want some music to practice with. But also just like get artist transcription books. Um, you know, if your mom has some piano books lying around, just try to read some, you know, hand, uh, uh, what are those called? Those things, those piano things. Um, you can read those. Yeah, what are those called? Anyway, I'm sure somebody will comment. You know, those things. Um, it's not handle, it's not Haydn. I think it starts with an H. Anyway, uh, so you need to be able to read really well. The other thing is you should just be able to play in a lot of different styles. Um, especially, uh, you know, if you're a drummer or bass player or guitar player or pianist, because you're part of the rhythm section, so you really need to know how to cop different rhythmic feels. Whereas in the horn section, maybe, you know, you have more stuff written out, so you don't necessarily need to know feels that well, but um, you should know a variety of different sort of Latin and pseudo-Latin feels, like bossa nova, I'm not going to do a complete list, but bossa nova, samba, merengue, uh, rumba, cha-cha, people like to dance to rumbas and cha-chas, and bossa novas, but mostly rumba and cha-cha, um, tango, um, um, so a variety of Latin styles, straight ahead jazz, kind of just two-beat foxtrotty type stuff, um, Dixieland stuff, uh, and, uh, also just a quick tip for bass players on, on copying different jazz styles, the, the kind of more old style stuff like Foxtrots and, and, um, Dixieland and whatnot, you can get a cool kind of more old tubby upright bass sound just by doing a little bit of palm muting, and I feel like that makes it a lot more authentic sounding than having a more sustained legato like modern jazz sound, but anyway, um, and also just, you know, various rock styles. You should be able to play some, like, nice kind of Nathan Easty, like, pop bass, just spacey and cool fills and stuff. Um, and uh, what else? Just country. Just anything. A lot of stuff gets thrown at you. You know, not too much, like, fusion, like, rush and, like, weather report and stuff. But, I mean, every now and then, maybe. And, and 
then you get to do it. I guess we have a guy coming on this cruise that does a whole Queen show, so that should be pretty fun. Um, but anyway, just be able to play in a lot of different styles. Um, again, if you don't think you're up to par, just start practicing. Just play along with different kinds of music. You know, get a get a new Abersol book or um, the Latin bass book by um, uh, I forget the author. I'll put links for for the for the Latin bass book that I like below because um, because it's really good. Um, but anyway, sight reading, versatility, and a lot of different styles is basically going to get you there. If you have decent chops and you can do those two things, um, you're probably ready to do a cruise ship gig. So I hope that that's helpful. Um, I know it's a little bit vague, but um, I hope that at least gives you an idea of the areas to look at in your playing. Um, so I'll talk to you guys soon. Thank you for watching.